But um, they talked something about the release schedule. And he said something like they usually have done two to four releases a year, big releases. Yeah, that didn't seem right. I, I couldn't really wrap my head around it. It's I want to I want to correct this here, and I know it might be different on it might be because of the 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 staggering of when it is released on console, but it's two right a year. Yeah, I I mean I'm trying Mostly to like calculate. I was trying to calculate in my head when I was listening to it. It definitely is, I don't think, three, like, mods or updates. Um, it feels like we no. normally get one early in the year, very early, January, February time, and then we get one, like, August time, and then we hear about stuff coming out, but then we don't get it on console until the following, like, January, February. And I might be wrong about this, but it definitely doesn't ever feel like it's three mods. No, it doesn't. And now they don't do the point like the half mods or anything like that it's yeah. just new which anyway that's a that's a small like nitpicky thing about that because it doesn't feel like it i think last year we might have got three but one of them was mod 21 yeah which was mod 21 right draw the north or is that 20 what are we on right now 22 we're on mod 22 yeah 100 percent. okay so mod 21 was nothing so it didn't feel like a content. Well, so that's it. If you could count how many dungeons <laughs> you right. played that's, last that's year. That's how I see it. Yeah. Personally, yeah. I see it as how many dungeons You played Hardcore Vault of Stars and Vault of Stars last year. And was that it? Zariel. Was Zariel last year? Or was it the year no, before? No, Zariel was the year before. Yeah, so something like that. So <laughs> Zariel was right before Vault of Stars? I believe so. So last year we only played Vault of Stars. That was the only thing that came out. Is that right? That sounds bad. If we had the game pulled up right now, I could look at the queue, but I'm pretty sure that's it. <laughs> Are we missing something? Really? There wasn't a big skirmish or anything, right? Wow. It really might have just been Vault of Stars last year. But the two versions of Vault of Stars. I mean, yeah, whatever. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> big difference. Baby Zariel? Anyway. <laughs> Actually... Well, no, Baby Zariel came out not long after Other Zariel. And that, yeah. was, that was the previous year. It's been some time. But, um, yeah. Because the year before that, it was Zariel and, because uh, it was all the Avernus stuff and yes. Infernal Citadel. Yeah, came out early in the year. And, and that's Zariel Re came Redeemed out. took up most of that time. End you of know. the year. Yeah. Yeah. Redeemed was the end of the year. And then obviously Echoes was the new. I guess because the previous year we had the hunts and stuff, we were doing a lot of hunts. That was yeah. a lot of time spent on that, so that yeah. was... But yeah, I guess it was just... It was just, uh... There's usually, like... Charandar. Yeah, there's usually, like, a dungeon and trial, so we have Vault Stars and Crown, even though they're not in the same... They're in that same year-ish frame, I guess. But, yeah. Because, okay, no, because Dragonbone Veil should have been the second piece of content that came out last year. Because, uh, Crown should have been the trial that we had last year, and they, they didn't... They didn't have yeah. a trial. Yeah. And oh, oh, sorry, I keep forgetting Demogorgon. Oh, yeah, babe. Probably let's not, don't count yeah, that. No, let's not, because taking something away to give it back to us doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's. Anyway, that's a big tangent there, being uh, picky about, nitpicky about what he said. But uh, he said he wants to have three, three big releases a year. He said two or three, and hopefully not two. He doesn't want it to be two. Obviously, some things take a lot more work to get out, and it will be bigger if it is only two. But yeah, looking at three updates, um, looking to do smaller updates with season passes or events to fill the gaps as well. And then he also said about developing episodic content, how Sharondar was an issue because it was a lot of small updates, the episodic stuff all close together. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he said that they want it to be more like Dragonbone Veil, it seemed, and Scale Blight. How it's like Dragonbone Veil is the campaign, and then there's all of the rest of it gets tied up in one little adventure as like an epilogue. So he said maybe there'll be a prologue as well to the to the to the mod, right? And it's more tied up like that instead of having like every few weeks another episode comes out like a Sharandar. Stuff to do with yeah. it. stuff to do with the, the the development side of it, and like not releasing stuff, not spoiling stuff, not releasing things at the wrong time. I think Something campaign. I think campaign layout though is very important because I got I get pretty exhausted towards the end of a campaign if it's getting trickled, released. Yeah. Just like Sharon Dar. I mean, 
you find it, I mean, some people will get on and, and do stuff daily, but I do find it very hard to continue doing that over a long period of time. You know, I want to get on to something new, new scenery. Yeah, which I'm all right with that. I'm all right yeah. with that. Yeah. Simple as that, really. Um, well, I guess it was simple as that, but we're pointing out how many things come out. But <laughs> uh, Grappling Hook is here to stay. I put that oh, you simply. put that in the notes? Yeah, I put that down. <laughs> Grappling Hook is here to stay. They like it. I'm okay it. with it, I guess. The zone... Maybe not into content. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not in content. Take it out of the trial. That's... I don't even <laughs> imagine know. Imagine just... It's not like it takes a lot to get to the second area, but imagine just getting to that point. No, but even I buggered out one time and ran off the edge trying to do it because it, like, doesn't work or whatever. If you're looking at yeah. a person over there, it doesn't work. And then, like, you think it works because it flashes green and you walk forwards and then you're off the edge or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, and not to mention, you're usually stuck in a mark because you're a tank or a healer. And, oh, yeah. And me and the other healer will always be stuck like that's another, at the that, front thing that's another thing that you've wanted to just make a video about what you did right you made a video saying please fix the mark system no i i mentally did oh, like, i talked to you about it, it. Okay. yeah so because that's obviously something that's brutal and when they put stuff in like that or put stuff in like doors that you have to interact with with a loading bar like in vault of stars yes fix that system if you want to put stuff like that in the game because yeah. that's brutal that's that's a like should be fixed asap kind of kind of bug yes and i'm surprised well it might might have come because obviously like we said this isn't everything this is just what people asked um you should know about it right should know about it is play the barb tank yeah right you would so think, he should you know? be marked and not be able to get through doors and go i can't get through the door 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 oh i'm marked you know yeah it's like you, you having to hope... put in the chat and mark me while everyone's like yeah. dying yeah yeah i've always been like timid about putting it out because i don't want people to think that i'm like you know People do not like when you're super negative about something, but um, it is something that's definitely an issue, and um, hopefully they do have that on their list of things. I've put it on the forums, but... But again, off, off track, because this is about the grappling hook, baby! <laughs> and it's coming to new zones, basically. I, I like the scale of Dragonbone Vale. I like how it has these big mountains and it's a big area and you have these grappling hooks. I got really into the grappling hook, running around like farming. All I can say is if you stuff. can get that high up on a map, you, they should give us flying mounts. Like, you are up there. Yeah, but it's probably only those sections that are actually like playable. Yeah, they the have sky. it like it is. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... He, he said something about bringing it to all the all the zones as well that might be able to do it. I don't, mate. I don't, I don't think you need to worry about that. I don't know. I Honestly. mean, there's just some things that's not going to matter. Like, I mean, let's talk about the little teleport stone. Do you ever use that? Oh, never in a million years. It's there though. But I think that was more of a free to play thing. Mine's like, oh, okay. I must say, we, mine's we, coded not, to some sorry. random place. Sorry. I think the Dread Ring or something. <laughs> I should, I should uh, rephrase that. Non VIP, because we have a, we have a one one that goes anywhere. Oh yeah. We have a uh, signpost, right? Yeah. So I think that was the point. That's kind of a gimmicky thing, honestly. But it's, yeah. I mean, the, the yeah. What's the, the, the advantage of the grappling hook? <laughs> Just to be able to have more expansive zones, right? Oh, same as, oh same as, yeah. Same as like the new really one. really get around because it is over a, the giant holes in the ground. I mean, it's a big zone and you have like these mountain bits where you can go up and you can use the dragon sight things and yeah, yeah. it has cool little zone I think mechanics. I like the Dragon Bone Bell area and I have no issue with the grappling hook other than in the trial. So yeah. I'm just, I'm not even complaining. I'm just, so it's if, funny. If stays, it's better that that stays than the Ross Bucket cars. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> You know, like cruising around. No, come on, come on. <laughs> um, I actually made a note here about, and I mentioned it earlier, the classes being equal. Mm -hmm. In and he's saying that they don't want the classes to be equal because pe people kept spamming about class balancing. And he mentioned if you, uh, they want the classes to be not equal in all situations, some to be better at some things, and blah blah. The problem with that is you will continue to face the problem of people asking about class balancing if you cater content to the specific classes based on not wanting classes to be equal in all content, right? Right. When you make a trial where the boss is hard to hit for melee characters, so everyone plays a wizard, 
like Tom. T- like Tom, everyone just went on a wizard and you instantly do so much more damage because you can hit him from anywhere while you're doing mechanics. Easy as that, right? That's that's exactly what happened. And obviously the cleric was also good and you know. Yeah, whatever. I mean both those classes were ranged and they could build their daily without the boss being there. Exactly. That's another good point, actually. I wouldn't have thought about that. So don't make content that make it so much easier for certain classes over others if you want them to be more specified for certain content and i guess part of it is as well uh, personally i think the change that should be made there is that you should have stuff on the characters that can specify to those con- pieces of content have powers and feats and stuff that you can choose based on if it's an aoe fight or a single target fight because some of the feats and powers like we've, we've mentioned the powers uh, uh yeah. for a bit. but some of the feats don't do anything you'll never put that feat on in a million years because either it's That's broken the or it doesn't do anything there's just set there's like a set couple that yeah. you're just always gonna run. so don't make it so that um i mean uh, this isn't true but i'm just saying don't make it so that the rogue is the best class in the game for aoe you know whether or not that's a debatable thing or whatever don't just make it like that make it so that it can do both yeah really well based on what you pick that's the idea right and those dps classes that have two paragons should be pretty easy to do that you would think but even with the other ones even with the cleric the warlock the guardian fighter make it so that you have choices on the character and the build is better in different scenarios making the classes better in different scenarios seems like a big oversight to me because people are just going to play that class for that content why do you want that to happen there's a, uh, I mean, as from a trial perspective, and you know, I was, I told myself when we started talking about this, I wasn't gonna compare it to other MMOs, but I have to say that there, like, like in Final Fantasy XIV, there are trials and boss fights where one enemy takes more, takes melee damage only, and one enemy in that trial takes range damage only, and they have to separate and go do the thing. Those like little mechanics like that in trials makes it important you know, to have a bit of everything. Also, um, I've heard this before. Um, This might be Final Fantasy that this is, that having two of the same class gives you a debuff, I want to say. Is there something Uh, along those lines? Yeah, I mean, they work together. Um, I know, like, Dancer and stuff like that work together in Final Fantasy XIV. But that's a good concept, even if it's, like, not a super existent. I I do think that it is Final Fantasy XIV that does that. Yeah, something like that, right? Yeah, and um, because I I only, you know, play minimal classes on there, Um, just the white mage. But, um, yeah, there's, like, a you have a dance partner, and they work with each other, and one buffs the other, and, and oh, things like that. Oh, with the like dancer. That. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah but there but, could be others that do that. Well, that. I'm pretty sure there's a flat just in the content. If you have two of the same character, there's a debuff. Oh, anyway. right. Yeah, something I mean, something, something lines. like that kind of stuff's uh, cool. And th- it's cool. It's kind of gatekeepy because it's like then now, because we already have one of this, you can't have another one of this. Kind of doesn't solve the issue. It's just an idea in that like other games do push to have multiple of yeah. things. Yeah. I think and in there the needs dis- to be something like that because at the minute it's uh, everyone figures out which is the best class to play and then everyone switches to it and builds that instead. Yeah. We've seen it so many times, so many metas where, oh, oh, these couple of people are doing really good damage on the cleric. It lets everybody in the video game build a DPS <laughs> cleric. And the thing is the developers don't know that, that the DPS cleric is massively overpowered because everyone's not talking about it. Yeah. It got a buff. It caught a buff at the time that there were there were clerics and because no I one was, was playing it. I was one of them <laughs> because I really liked the cleric DPS and I heard about one person on PC that apparently was doing really good on it. So I went, I'm going to try and figure this out. So I went on it and started playing it, and lo and behold, it was incredible. Then it caught a buff, and then obviously people were catching on about it. Well, I you was, were streaming. I was so... streaming it, which wasn't was also like obviously probably contributed to people picking it up more but yeah then next minute you have a lot of people playing this one class and everyone's playing it and then you've got people that don't want to switch or whatever you know down in the dumps because they're getting beat by everyone who's just just built this class that's massively overpowered previous weeks that's that will continue to happen as long as you make it so that classes are specified to single target aoe range melee fights etc i mean and 
I guess into the defense right now is the the way that Neverwinter is set up though is you know you're going to have to build up a whole nother character in order to potentially participate better in a certain piece of content and I was comparing it to Final Fantasy 14 but on there you can just change your job on the same person and right. go in and do it Neverwinter you can't is, do that in Neverwinter so you're investment. stuck it's exactly it's a it's a big investment while in Final Fantasy 14 it's just a grind to get the gear and everything on, on the same character. You don't have to go and make a whole new character in order to do that job. Neverwinter doesn't do that. So it's hard to just, especially if you're playing it at a minimal cost, right? It's hard to just switch over. So it is up to the developers. It is up to them to strategically find a way to make everything viable in all content. Yeah. Which is, you know, that will... It's, it's an issue. Class balancing is always difficult to do. And to be honest, it's actually not that bad right now, I don't think. There are some things that they're obviously they know about and they will work on it. But we'll see how that pans out. People always yeah. discover cheese stuff and whatever. I don't think know. that stuff counts. <laughs> um, I have here written paladins don't have enough variety in their powers, which was just, I believe that's just a quote in what he said, talking about earlier, saying mm-hmm. that... Um, saying that the obviously that we've already spoke about the paladin is going to get changed or well worked on um and then he also mentioned about having those powers that are core to the class ones that are niche powers and he said the paladin doesn't have enough variety in the powers which i mean especially when you can only run one aura and you know like just oh, like things like yeah, that that's actually something that i only really thought about more recently is that the auras the aura thing needs to be changed because why have a hindrance yeah (laughs) why have a hindrance on the paladin where the auras aren't that good even no they're weak auras so you don't really you're even sitting there going do i even need to choose one (laughs) like a lot of the time you don't no you don't even need to use an aura it's not like they're like choose this over anything else it's kind of whatever but yeah having that having that weird lock on you can only use half of your um class features at a time weird anyway yeah that was, that was just a short uh aside <laughs> this next thing uh already spoke already spoke about zen store changes someone asked about that which obviously we can just quickly brush over this because whatever um the what's that section called where um the section in the zen store which is like the uh services services is that, what, is that what it is? Well, it's got like Something race like that, roll right? yeah. and all that stuff, yeah. Um, fashion bags, bank space, bags. He said he really wants an increased professions bag. It's something he really wants in the game. That's something that he struggles with and was like, I'd really like an increased professions bag because he's always full of professions materials. Oh, inventory. Oh, yeah. So I actually put here, changes seem to be driven by actual experience in game. Things that have never been mentioned in the past by devs, because why would they mention it when they don't experience it? Yeah. This, is, this was just a point, like, talking about how great uh, it seems, that, uh, how great uh, Brett seems in this yeah. role because of this experience. I mean, I have to kudos him. Every time a question was asked, he put his perspective in off of playing the game, and that is just a fresh breath of air to hear, for sure, and... Yeah, so, I mean, like I said, we don't care too much about Zen changes and stuff, but um, he said those obviously those services things will be something. He also sent on about rotating items that might come in and out, making giving people more reasons to buy stuff on there, and also AD Sync, the Wondrous Bazaar. Mm-hmm. Obviously, these are just quick quick mentions. Oh, um, okay, so the next thing. Let's just jump back into it, like there was no gap there. Um he said sorting and searching in bags and he mentioned again about his companions searching for all the companions and stuff digging through them all he said he wants to do something about that which is just kind of an aside but i guess yeah it's it's something that's going to be changed so searching in bags yeah something you would like right yes me i just have everything dumped and i i click the sort sort all and just like scroll through (laughs) i don't care about the bag space also i don't care about bank space or whatever I have 15 characters that have bags that have stuff in it. Yeah. So it's kind of whatever to me, but the searching thing seems seemed cool. The thing he, the example he gave was like, I just want to see all my artifacts wherever they are all in one place. And you can see now see all the artifacts he has. Yeah. Stuff like that, right? Yeah. I think that's quality stuff that, mm-hmm. you know, 
would be helpful to anyone if they wanted to utilize it. Next thing, uh, you might have some strong feelings about this. No plans for player housing. Yes. I was pretty upset about that. Um, which, I, I, which I went, who cares? And you <laughs> went, me. Yes, I do. I, it's not like it's a huge deal, but I would like a little place I can decorate on my own. But hey, I'm a Sims player, Stardew Valley player. Uh, I like the idea that you can get a house in, in MMOs and invite people over to hang out. Player housing is clearly a tough thing because even Final Fantasy has like limited housing yeah. and stuff and it's like a big issue but one of my favorite things is is having a, a house that i built i mean even like the fable games i would go buy and buy houses like retail and stuff just like something weird about it and playing a lot of those simulation games where you're always taking care of people and houses and stuff yeah. I, don't, I like the idea of taking all of your like being able to get relics or like trinkets and taking it all there and putting it in there and decorating it the way you want it's just more personable yeah. but it's not it's not a big deal it's he, just he did say if it was ever to happen it would be linked to strongholds that, that i think that's pa paraphrasing again but something along that lines yeah so that it'd be more like a stronghold based housing or whatever you can have like a spot in the stronghold that's yours or like i don't know i don't know what yeah, they probably just want the map to be like, oh, well, 150 people can be on this map. So yeah. we can have, everyone can have a house. Which, if you have something in the game that's like already c could be. But I don't even mind if it's like something like, like you can go into your own workshop. Mm -hmm. I think you should be able to just go, your workshop could be your house. Decorate the workshop. Yeah, maybe. The way you want. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know yeah. the limitations on that stuff. It's kind yeah. of, you know. Um, no current plans for PvP whatever but not just that <laughs> I, I actually saw somebody else's and this is why people's summaries aren't always like the best way to listen to it yeah but somebody i had answer to that and the stronghold one is just no plans when it's like the, the player housing sorry no plans for player housing it's like yeah but they also said if it was to happen blah blah right nice little bit of hope there A little context same for this one no current plans for pvp but then he also said there's one pvp focus feature which is far out from coming in but then mention something about uh glory rewards because of inconsistency getting games and stuff like that kind of another like band-aid fix similar to the stronghold stores right like instead of fi instead of reworking the whole system let's just yeah. make it so that the stuff you can get from there is better or easier to get or whatever which is sometimes stuff like that needs to be done i guess if you don't have the time to fix it at least something yeah so yeah um, I can tell you, though, I don't care about the PvP stuff. No, unless it's chicken PvP, which they said years ago now. Again, another thing that's they a long loved time, chicken long time coming. <laughs> chicken PvP was fantastic. It was one of the best things they brought to the game. Yeah, and it, it came was out, fun. It came out of nowhere. And it was like, here's chicken PvP, and it's like, wow. It was wow. so much fun, actually. And they mentioned so stuff about like hero-based PvP that isn't like, oh, I have all this money, and I have the best stuff, and I have these cheesy broken items. They can yeah. they can balance it if it's hero based. Yeah. Like pick pick the character. The, there's characters in the game that even have powers that are in the game and cast it. So I I don't know. Again, I don't know how that works. I'm not a game developer, but it seems like they do have some assets they can use. I don't there know. are some things. Yeah. Just chicken. I mean, PvP. I wouldn't get mad if it was chicken PvP. No. I wouldn't get mad in general, but PvP chicken, is chicken just PvP <laughs> year round. Uh, when it's winter, bring out um, uh, penguin PvP different skins. <laughs> really easy i uh, love this you yeah. should you should apply yeah i think uh that's that they can do that for for the pvp stuff um ways to handle dragon eggs for people wanting like the collection stuff or whatever it's i put here not a major effort i don't know if that's what i think or if that's what they said <laughs> <laughs> i think it's um, what they said they're not like rushing to do it but that... this is the consumable <laughs> dragon egg right so what do you think about that? I, I, first of all, I was collecting them because I thought this would be cool. I'll make a video. I'll get whatever it is. It'll be cool. And then I found out it's just a consumable that isn't better than my, what I have on. Yeah. So which, I didn't care. I didn't I mean, bother. We sat there and said, okay, so you have, you've given one egg to everyone. You need 15 eggs. Was it? To get, oh yeah, to get that's it. crazy amount. So yeah. one in fifteen players can get this yeah. item. That seems weird. 
And my other thought, and we've just talked, we talked about this earlier, you know, it feels like a million years ago now that we talked about it, but we talked about this earlier, like the uh, doohickey, it's now, is not used. So the hawk is now not used. My thought is like, I don't care. At some point, the dragon egg is not going to be of any use and we'll move on. Yeah. I mean, it, it is like a little, like a little pet as well that floats around with you. I've seen people with it and it is pretty cool. I understand people want that for collections. Right. Um... But they could give mm. you a they could give you a, a vanity pet dragon. They could put that out. But you can have both. You can have the pet, the dragon on the bar and have a vanity pet and have a companion. They're all there, right? Oh, then you got a bunch it's of dragons flying it's around It's like having you. the doohickey flying around you or the hawk or whatever. Um, because it's on the bar, it's a different thing. I see. So well, I mean, if the fact that they gave it to a limited amount of accounts, like or every account only got one, right? Yeah, so... like it's just. It's, it's just, just like a, only one in 15 people can get it. It's kind of like a yeah strange, but I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're looking at some way to do that, I guess, to help people out who want it for the collection. Go for it. It's worth a lot of money as well. Like those things are worth a lot of money. So if you do want it, it is expensive to get, which is, I don't know, you know, I don't, I, weirdly enough, I don't actually have strong feelings about that stuff and I don't really care. I guess we don't have to have an opinion about everything. <laughs> just bring it up. Um, it's just weird not to have an opinion about it. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, they said they don't want to continue nerfing companions so that people just go to the next one. They want the companions to be balanced. Because I think it got brought up about Zuna, and now Zuna's really weak, and a lot of people had it before because it was really good at single target and AoE. Mm -hmm. And then they nerfed it, and now everyone's annoyed because their Zuna got nerfed because they all put money into it. And they said they don't want to keep doing that, and they've been doing it a lot recently. Where they just nerf the best thing is because s some content creators make extensive lists and videos of this is the best companion hands down. Yeah, they give the, list, they give and, the you know. opening to how to how people who you know have a lot of money or a lot of resources can really corner a market and start making things very expensive. Anything that's in demand is very expensive. And I tell people, healers all the time now, if you want to max out your healer, you're going to be spending a crap load of money because people have put out there what's the best. And everyone knows it, and they mark those prices up like crazy. People get mad about the, like, companions being changed. I mean, it's a timing thing. If you bought... If you got Zuna at the very last minute for like five mil or more and then they nerfed it, you're probably going to be mad because you got it yeah. and then they changed it. Some people had Zuna for a long time before they changed it. Um, but I agree that the constant changing and, and rescaling of companions is tough, especially now that I've talked to a lot of players who are newer to the game. You can't immediately recommend things and then that that recommendation stays sound for a long period yeah. of time. It's hard it's hard to give people a straight answer because it's like you don't know. Yeah, and I know that there's uh I mean I guess the idea with this would really be to make it so that all the companions are the same or similar. Like yeah. there's AoE companions, single type companions. And then obviously there's the other power ones, utility ones that we talk about. But just looking at it from a easier point of view from like the damage thing, make them all the same and just do skins. Which, yeah. we, which we've wanted for a while and it's like it's almost annoying when there's a tier list and it's this companion is the best and you go oh out of the 120 companions or whatever the one i want to use is like 97 yeah <laughs> why is the water archon so bad or whatever i want to use the water archon he's terrible he, but he looks cool yeah, i think I it's know. just wild whenever a companion just comes out of the works that's the best and it's one that you couldn't even sell for ad because no one wanted it and you're, so, so you're specifically talking about the cold iron warrior yeah right and now, now the frost mimic right that was another one that i think i had multiple of that well, the frost mimic that was because it got changed so that it had good stats right for the for the um bonus right right it had it became defense and awareness which is was a fantastic tank one yeah. it became worth a lot of money cold iron warrior we probably deleted how many of them because we would get them in tower of the mad mage all the time it was a very oh, yeah. common drop back then and you couldn't sell them it no, was there was get rid of them they, they were we actually and some friends of ours went into their mailboxes on alt characters that they had to sell those items and found them a year plus later. It'd yeah. been mailed back to them because they didn't want to sell them anymore. And now they're worth, mm -hmm. they were, were worth six mil or whatever. Yeah. A lot of money. 
just because of how like erratic the changes are to the companion balancing yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I mean, and even the other like the other other scale of it is whenever companions are limited, but they have a good bonus, and now they're a hundred mil. You know, like say the tutor, for instance, like right. just things like that. I think people think that they might they might think that they have to have it. They don't, but even like all I can't even recommend good debuff companions and stuff because they get so no it's it's a nightmare to suggest a very good companion like the tutor right now which a lot of people are talking about and using yeah. and i you know I, i'm starting to see people recommend it and say a healer should run the tutor for example and it's like you to can't say, yeah you just, cannot run that, that tutor so, costs more than your healer is going to cost you to build i mean that's just like or there might ridiculous. not be any i mean yeah and they're limited not, they're there's not so many reasons any. why you can't and that's why i can't recommend people run something because i know that it's sitting on the market right now for like 10 mil or 20 mil yeah. you know it's just not it's not cool so yeah i i think right now the companion balance is getting better because it got to a point where people went oh well you could run a striker now or an augment whatever and there are people running both and making it work either way in the current state of the game and that's pretty cool yeah that's something they've been trying to do for a long time i don't think anyone should be um ridiculed or criti like criticized for whichever way they want to do it you know i'm obviously i like running whatever i can to help the group but at the same time i like running things for me too so yeah you know so yeah i mean working on that not doing the whole nerf the best one everyone flocks to the next best one um i think it's getting there they they want to have a pool of valid options to use basically the, so, yeah the companion yeah, sh just shouldn't be the game changer no i i go for the skin thing and i know there's obviously some technical limitations to like the way that the, the companion looks like the certain attacks they have obviously it can't be a guy with a sword and also like a dog biting someone or like that's kind of like yeah. doesn't make sense to have those same like animations for the attacks i don't know how you would do it but like the skin thing is something that i think is the better way to look at it so i've got here um new classes and races need a lot more time to work on them than the bard did so a monk or a druid would have a way more robust release which obviously we went over the bard mm -hmm. launching not so good so i guess the point is he's saying that he wouldn't want that to happen now he would want it to be way more solid and way more tested and stuff beforehand yeah i think that's fair i mean aside from the game probably needing another tank option which either of those would be yeah it's just the problem is that content eliminates healers and tanks left and right so it's like what's the point <laughs> yet you know maybe when things needed more of those those classes yeah but yeah i mean I'm, I'm glad they're not trying to rush things out but at the same time we waited a long time for the bard mm -hmm. um only for it to not like perform very well so i, I want them to take their time yeah and so make I, things I, work. I guess the thing to take from that is it's gonna take time if it even happens and the name drops were monk druid and also gnome was name dropped and this is obviously it's just this is just it was mentioned as like an example or whatever but those were the things and obviously i i think you might have said people don't like gnomes or whatever it's really unpopular so we wouldn't be making gnomes that might have been how it was brought up but i heard gnome and went hell yeah of course you did i, I thought you said if you yeah. played what if you played wow you would you would play a gnome absolutely 100 <laughs> percent gnome um i was surprised to hear that we will be getting a test server on console sorry will not be getting it it's getting looked at yes and i guess it was this was pushed up because of the playstation network issues with the last launch i mean so that's it's becoming fair. it's becoming more of a necessity yeah i mean also there are very big brains on playstation and xbox that could help <laughs> you know i i mean there's a yeah, lot of fair. reasons why i think you know and i'm not being biased i do prefer playing the game on xbox um just because that's where i started right but yeah when you got to go on preview um and look at stuff i mean you got to transfer over a pretty half character and try and kind of look at stuff and it would just kind of be nice to everyone have that ability to help the community help the feedback and yes the whole playstation services issue the the that whole issue is another thing yeah 
But um, he said they couldn't yeah. have known about the issues. They said it was a specifically a PlayStation Network problem, which obviously a lot of companies blame other companies. Don't they? Like, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't know exactly, but I mean, I'll take his word for it that he said it was specifically a PlayStation. And the thing was, Xbox didn't have issues. No. And PC, I don't believe had issues. I'm Not the sure. same kind. I don't. It's think. like they couldn't play the game. So there clearly was something to do with PlayStation. They said they would have known if they had a test server on there. Yeah. They, and they could never have known without that. So I guess that's something that is being looked at now. And that was surprising to hear that because I didn't think that was, was going to happen at it's any point. It's weird because you would think that the test server would just be a completely different game in itself. So you wouldn't know um, because it would have like a different licensing or a code on it. You know, I don't know how all that works, but... I don't understand. I mean, I, that I assume the test server is just a copy. It's like it, 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 if there's an issue with yeah, one, there'll yeah, be an issue with right. the other, right? Like, yeah. You would think that that's the point. I still, I'm still all for it. Yeah. No matter what. <laughs> um. Okay. So I, I think this was he was asked towards the end. Uh, what are the three main focuses? Yeah. For him going into the role, right? Which was kind of like a summary, and it was. The, he wants to improve tools for the developers to be able to work on things that they struggle with right now and improve continuous uh, regular progression for player content and updates, including improving his existing systems. Which that was long, but it was basically what he said at the start about um, making a quality of life changes for both developers and players. Yes. It's a very, like, he wants to work on the core of the game to get it working properly, I yeah. guess, to put it as simply as that, for both sides of it, you know, so that they can work on it better, so that other people have more enjoyment and more updates yes. and fixes, etc. Um, the next thing was looking to, by the end of this year, hopefully, and, and then into next year, be able to make it so that the releases will be more, like, big and more robust modules. I think it needs that. I need. I think it needs to feel like, you know, Destiny Two Witch Queen campaign. I think it needs to feel big like that. And yeah, I, yeah, and having and like these bigger. Be big. <laughs> yeah, and and by that, I hope that means multiple pieces of Q content. That's yeah. that's the thing that I. I mean, I sit here and I've been waiting for so long, and I say this many, many times that I would play the game seriously again if it released so and so many pieces of Q content in one mod. Yes, and that's with the that's with the asterisk that it can't be because they've taken it from the next mod and then we get the next mod without anything yes you know it, what i mean it's like oh here's all this stuff and then hopefully they don't realize for the next mod we're just gonna not do yeah. that now anything. you get nothing which they've done that a couple of times yeah. now with acquisitions it had a skirmish right i believe yeah, yeah. and uh and then with jaw of the north yes to to that didn't have a piece of content, you know, a new piece of content with it. And uh, Skirmish, maybe I'll count the Skirmish. I don't know. We'll see. You can't um, really, mini coins, right? You can't really. Yeah, mini coins. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it's like making it so that the mods are, are bigger is obviously huge. That's like a big way that the game, hopefully, that's, that's, that's good news to everyone, right? It needs to be that way. Because right now, mods kind of just feel like another patch. Yeah, and um, uh, I guess a lot of the changes that have been mentioned and a lot of these, like, small updates and stuff that seem to actually... They all seem to contribute towards going somewhere, I feel like. Yeah. It's all, like, core changes that help fix the entire game, which can help push these, like, bigger releases at some point. Yes. You know? It's like the, the game feels like, for a while now, it's like when you're sprinting down a hill... And you're like kind of like losing your footing and you're kind of like tripping and you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. Like I'm gonna fall over and die. But I have to keep sprinting as fast as I can to not die. Yeah, I mean, honestly. That's what Neverwinter kind of feels like in a way, where it's like it it's only looked like it's going to shit for a while. Yeah, I mean it it's definitely a good way of putting it. It's kind of like a you know, it's not supposed to be a really negative outlook because running down a hill like that is still fun, right? <laughs> yeah, it's still I mean, fun and you, even though you're scared that it's all gonna go to shit and you're gonna like trip and fall down this hill it's like they do keep throwing stuff out but the things that they're throwing out aren't fixing the core problems with the game yeah it's it's like just extra little fixes and here's a bit of content and blah blah i would be happy 
you know, we all are talking about the content releases and not releasing a pod with no content. I would be happy if, say, Jaw the, North, Jaw the North came out and the entire mod was just fixing everything. And and it was to the point where it was like, now we can start actually making the game better now that we've fixed the stuff that is broken. Yeah, you know? that's, that's the tough part is because trying to implement fixes, we all want that, but... You know, it's and it's not like we're people are being too needy saying, but that's not all we want because in reality, it's um, you fix everything, but then there's nothing to do after fix. And and I don't know. There's a there's definitely a tough. I would like for there just to be a definite, one hundred percent. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna fix everything, and just do it. And it just yeah. be right to that to that first time. Well, I say the first time, but everything's been reworked about how many times. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously that's the issue with it, right? Is that if they did a mod like that, I would be happy for them to do it, but I won't play the mod. Right. Because what is there to right. play? It's... That's kind of the issue, I think, that's kind of... For, for people like us, for like long-time endgame players, that is kind of the catch-22 yeah. I would like to see that stuff, but I would also like stuff to play in it. So it's, you know, I would sacrifice a not player mod <laughs> for them to fix I that stuff. I honestly think but, so as well. But then they, you know, might feel like they're wasted time if no one plays it. I don't know. It's kind of a tough situation, I feel like. It is tough. Yeah. There, it's, it's a fine line between getting everything fixed and putting out content for people to do. Um, but it's, you just need to. You need to go through and get everything fixed and work out the the kinks of the game that have been going on since like the but as I was I, when I was started playing the game and, yeah. and like like early 2016 and stuff I would say yeah this this was a good um we are coming to the end of the notes that are right now I guess um it was good to get this and I he, Brett was introduced in this stream right this was his first I, yeah i believe so I, that i know of yeah I, I didn't even know anything about it until we pulled no. it up we pulled it up because people were talking about it and then it got mentioned at the start i was like oh okay cool but um he seems really optimistic for big changes to the game and on a short timeline as well he was being obviously he was being careful about what he was saying about with when stuff was happening but it sounded like his idea and vision for like the changes that would happen with the game would be happening by the end of the year easily yeah i i think i mean he seemed genuine with everything you know i think i have like this uh lack of trust with oh, stuff yeah. you know There's so it's like you know people um, people had a lot of confidence in some of the previous producers and it seems like it was going really well they were really engaging um and seemed you know genuine to an extent so i hope that um you know we read it we're reading it right this this producer, he does play the game. He does put in his own experiences into his work. He was saying, you know, I've experienced this, so I'd like to fix this. So maybe he can see what, oh, these guys are experiencing this, you yeah. know, and, and needs to get fixed. I think that's so, that's one thing is I don't want to go look back at a year later and go, wow, we were so silly that we believed it. We got, we got bamboozled again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it was worth actually talking about this and going over everything because, you know, I saw a very small amount of notes about it in a Discord. It didn't do it justice. It didn't do it justice, exactly, because when I went there and actually saw and heard the new producer, Brett, talking, and I was like, okay, this this is giving me more information, obviously, because I'm sitting there watching it. It's more than just the notes, but also I'm learning about him and why all this is being said. It's coming from a more, uh, to me, I, I trust it a bit more now. Weirdly enough, I could see the chat. I mean, the community has some like toxic traits. <laughs> yeah. And the Twitch chats in those are often kind of like, strange because there's some very weird questions asked about the game that don't seem important but also like some shit talking yeah i'll say is generally a thing that happens in there right yeah. which isn't that's not news to anyone but it's almost like i could see the tone of the chat change by the end of the stream yes weirdly enough it did seem like and obviously there is this whole thing that we're everyone's like cautious about what they hear from 
Crypto Studios about Neverwinter. Of course. <laughs> but it did seem like it was there was a shift and people seemed like seemed more positive by the end of it after listening to all this stuff, which I mean I definitely thought so. And obviously like we're not just gonna blindly believe that all this is gonna happen. It's just good to hear that that is the plan. Yes. You know? Yeah. And if the main issue was that they needed a vision and a direction and a person in that role of leadership that knew the right direction that everything should go in, then I am optimistic about this. Yeah, because they have someone, I think, that understands it. And, exactly. And, that, and having someone in that leadership role, if that's what it took and it can get there, that's great. And and I hope the best for it. I mean, out of all that, all that, all that talking, I think um, just the, the most exciting part is that there is – going they are looking at things that are currently not working in the game and going to try and fix those things that seems pretty straightforward um yeah i think i think that i'm excited about i mean especially for like say the bard for instance not because in the paladin but i mean there was a lot of stuff mentioned that, yeah. that we give a shit about so it was yeah. like it was it was, was like, okay. valid to hear all that normally stuff normally it's like they you know it's like give away this and answering silly questions that but when they started bringing things up that pertain to me pertain to my the information that i can help and give people pertain to the classes that i play that's a big one right is even yeah. the things that we don't care about we know that that information or those changes are valid because we are we do communicate with the community we do give information to the community yes yes and we try to do that you know as best we can from our point of view so and I, i'm happy i can kind of turn around and, and give the community that does go and look at healer videos or, or does communicate with me some good news that there are some good changes coming and fixes coming to maybe your favorite class or just in general some good stuff coming for for the game so yeah, I'm excited, and I thought all. I think all in all, it is a good. It's a good direction, which is yeah. very, is very surprising for me to be sitting here saying this. And uh, yeah, for sure. Like I said, yeah. some of the. So I, I said some of the times. I said a couple of times during this conversation, like some negative stuff about the state of the game, but most of that was because they it is being addressed. Those negative things are being addressed, which is yeah. a good thing. Obviously, there's some things aren't. There are some things that still need to be looked at and need to be talked about. But we don't know if they are being. They could be being talked about. This yeah. wasn't everything, you know. So we, you yeah. can only sort of be a bit more optimistic about the things that they did speak about and apply that to also possibly the things they didn't. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, this one felt very organic. It felt very candid. It felt like the question would be answered and then... The next one would be asked. There was no fluff in between to drag on time. If anything, they went on longer answering questions. They did. Yeah, and, and Julia actually asked uh, Brett, oh, do you want to keep going? He said, if you've got more questions to ask, I've got more questions to answer. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. that was great. I was like, oh, wow, they're going to do a double length one or something. Because yeah. <laughs> normally it's like they're out of there. They're out of there on that. And yeah. there does need to be that communication, especially when you have these like these community sort of struggles and stuff with all these questions and all these problems. And it was, I mean, I thought it was pretty well delivered and that's pretty yeah. much my, uh, mine too. I like know? it, but go watch it. Yeah. So the, the link will be in the description below. Uh, obviously this will be a mini part. Uh, so as we've realized, yeah, this, this, is, this might be to a, talk about, <laughs> this might be a three parter. Yeah. This could be a, a, a long part. Um, so we'll probably bookmark at some point everything at the bottom uh, in the description we'll bookmark section. So if there's a question that popped up that you are interested in, um, it might be an easier way for you to navigate that. Um, but definitely check out the live stream. The live stream might be shorter than this, actually. 100%. It's shorter. <laughs> probably half the length of this, but you don't get our, um, our uh, what, do you, what do you say? I'm going to say seasoned point of view. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Seasoned point of view. But, I mean, as far as the healer side go, uh, the healer's side goes with this, it's it's looking optimistic, and I'm seeing that, you know, a lot of paladins talking, and hopefully this does mean a cool rework for the paladin, fixes for the bard, so there'll be more videos to come on my end. And for tanks, uh, he's a barbarian tank, so... 
that's all I got for tanks. <laughs> but the barbs might get might get buffed now. Exactly, that's you know? what I mean. Yeah, so. <laughs> they'll favor the producer to keep him around. <laughs> Either way, guys, uh, thank you so much for. That. Do you want to do the exit or? Go for it. Okay. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Um, if you guys have any further questions or comments, feel free to put it below. We'd be happy to answer all of that for you. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens with the future of Neverwinter. Be sure to check out Coco's channel and well, we're going to be on your channel and my channel. Is it going to be on both? Yeah. Okay, so if it's on, if you're watching this on Ava's channel, also go to youtube.com forward slash icocoum. Uh... I K O K O U M. We, we can just put this on your channel. And, uh, really? Yeah, let's just put this on your channel. Just on my channel? Yeah. Okay, uh, well, and if you're listening to it on my channel, then go to youtube.com forward slash I Ava. Yeah, okay. I already did it. I can chop and change that together. I don't probably. know about that. Yeah, don't worry about it. Well, Coco, thanks for having me on the channel. Well, that, Ava, thanks for having me on your channel. Oh, we're not going to be on. It's not going to be on my channel. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Until next time, guys. See you later. Of course. Ha <laughs> ha.